today on DY Solar Power Papa, I want to show you, we're doing all this solar power and solar panels have a lot of dirt on them. We're still producing a lot off of these. And you can see we have 24 panels here, right there. We have 16 panels over here. We have uh, 16 panels over there as well. We have the 14 panels over here. And then on the other side of the house, we have 26 more panels. And we don't have, not one single panel is on that roof. Although we do have those solar vents up there, which are exhausting the attic. And here is the other panels. There's six on this shed, six on that shed. Eight back there, two on top of that shed, and then there is another four right here. So all of these are being able to run all that. And once again, we don't have any panels up there on the roof. They're being used to give us shade under this area of the house and shade over there. And then we have some shade for storage underneath these. We uh, did have some, we had 12 panels on that back wall during the winter time, which produced quite a bit of power. I was really surprised being on the wall because we don't get very much rain out here. I think we get like maybe 10 to 20 days of rain and we get over 300 days of sunshine out here. So rain is really not a big deal out here. Um, dust is a big deal out here. We will go inside. We have those 95 solar panels out there to run those mini splits, to run that freezer, refrigerator, um, washer, dryer, the other freezer, lights, quite a bit. Right now, the upstairs is at 64 degrees in the hallway and 59 to 61 in the bedrooms. We're super cooling the rooms right now so we don't have to run our air conditioner after 530. You can see that we're keeping that 48 volt battery bank charged up. Same thing over here on this 48 volt. That is on a lithium iron phosphate. This 12 kilowatt grow watt is using eight AGM batteries, those gray ones there, 248 volt banks. This 6,500 watt off-grid inverter, the MPP white one here, is actually, I'm using Walmart deep cycle batteries and I've been using them for almost two and a half years now. They're still running good. <laughs> I don't charge those underneath 12 volts they'll stay above 12 volts all the time and they're in an air conditioned you can see that uh where are we at we're at 70 degrees inside it's uh two o'clock in the afternoon and it's about 98 degrees outside so we have this 18,000 btu air conditioner running now these are really easy to set up it doesn't matter 
if it's these 24 watt 20 I mean sorry 24 volt 2400 watt inverters or 6500 watt 48 volt battery bank 5000 watt 48 volt battery bank or 12,000 watt to 36,000 watt surge 48 volt battery bank on that when you go to connect these to the components it's all pretty much the same uh, if we take a look at this one this one's pretty simple here we have our solar here's our negative and our positive coming in from our solar it just goes right up in there and then we have our battery leads for the positive and negative and then we have this black and white wire goes to our AC out and the blue black and green wire is our AC in and if we follow that that goes in there goes down there comes over and it's the grid assist it is this one right here and we're able to assist charging our batteries over there with this inverter because these are all pure sine wave so but it doesn't matter whether it's pretty much the inverters are all the same if you look over here we have this right here comes out to this box where we plug all of our stuff in you've got your battery cables positive minus you got your um, AC in like I have over here I can plug it into any of these and then you have your solar this one actually has two different strings on it you can bring in um, so on that one you'll you can have two different MPPT charge controllers inside of this and have two different strings this one only has one MPPT charge controller so for those four there once again this one has two MPT MPPT charge controllers for this and you got your negative positive for one array coming in from the solar and your negative and positive for the other one and we have our this is actually going over to our dryer right here so that's our AC out this is another one this is AC out um, for our plugs right here to be able to plug things in this black wire right here is the AC out and that actually goes down there and you can see but there's that black and white plug that plugs together that is running this mini split that's how we get power to that and then this is the AC in we also have plugs for that where we can right there plug it in to the uh, any of these outlets so if I'm gonna take this one and use grid assist I can plug it into this one which is this outlet right here I can plug it into this one which is this outlet right here or I can plug it into these this set which is this outlet this outlet and those outlets over there so any of these they're all grid assist I can plug them in the only difference is is on this one for the grid assist since I'm running this 220 up here when I go to plug this in these are 120 going into two separate 120 plugs that will not let me plug that in while I'm running a 220 appliance to charge that battery if I had it connected to where it was 220 and I were to go into this one right here which I I could wire that where I could have a plug like I do for this air conditioner then I could do that and continue to keep running that but I cannot run this 220 and charge this with 120 at the same time so and once again this is the same thing we've got our our negative battery cables positive battery cable and every one of our positive battery cables go to goes to a breaker so we can shut off the power going to our going to our batteries 
and there's your two strings coming in from your solar. Here's one string, and this is another string right there. So you got the white, white and red for one string, and then this string is another string. And then back here, this is our 220 going out for this line and the one behind it. Those are going out to our three and a half ton and our four ton air conditioner. And this orange one is going right over to this plug right here so that we can plug things in. And then we also have this one is wired up right here so that we can take um, the AC out right here and go into the AC in of this one. And if this wasn't running, we could charge the batteries, our battery bank, our AGMs, using this as a grid assist, even though it's not the grid, but it's a, it's a pure sine wave coming out of this so we can use that, we could plug that in. But once again, I don't believe I would be able to be running 120 and 240 at the same time to be able to use that charger. So as where this one over here, because it's only 120 volts coming out of it for the output, I can plug that in at any time because these are all 120 volt outlets. Anything that I have 220, 230, or 240 is directly wired over. See, it goes to that and then it plugs in from the back of the appliance goes up there. And then, like I said, this over here is directly wired over to the air conditioner. There's a breaker, two breaker boxes on each one of those. But it's pretty easy to connect all this stuff. The um, problem that really messes people up is how to connect the solar panels so that you can stay within your guidelines of like what your um, DC in from your solar panels is. And I believe on this one, it is 250 volts DC in. Um, just trying to find where it says that on there. But um, I believe this one is 250 volts DCN. This is only 150 volts. That's 150 volts in, that's 150 volts in. And I believe these are 145 volts in from the panels. So if those panels are like almost 38 volts on each panel, that would give me 76 if I connected two of them in series and then three, if I did four, that would give me 152 volts. I believe they're 37.6 or something. It's just a little bit under 150 volts. So I'm able on all these inverters to be able to connect four in series of the 250 watt panels. So that would make my current be four times, I believe it's like an eight point something coming in current. So it should be like um, around 32, 33 amps coming in off of four panels connected. I'm sorry, it's voltage. So the voltage would be, um, four times what the panel voltage is, but your current would stay the same. But if you run it in parallel, then you would increase your current. So if it was eight amps on one panel and you ran it in parallel on another one, then you'd have 16 amps. If you put it in parallel with another two for a total of four, that would be 32 amps that you would have on those panels. So it's not really hard to do, just, have to kind of really watch videos and study stuff to be able to get the basics down. And once you have the basics down, then you can just start flying through this stuff 
and understanding it. But it's like anything, get the basics down first, then you'll be able to really be able to jump into this stuff and start doing a lot of stuff. But you can run a lot of stuff on off-grid solar. Like I said, the we'll be probably next couple of weeks connecting that hot water heater. And one of these days we'll probably put a stove out here because we can just run it over from this one right here and just run a line over for that. So that wouldn't be too hard to do. Eventually we'll be getting rid, moving these AGMs somewhere. So we'll probably put a stove over here somewhere because this is like our summer kitchen out here. <laughs> We have a sink, a countertop, coffee maker, and then we have all the stuff over here for any of our appliances, microwave, um, countertop oven. We have, uh, we can use a hot plate. So we can do it out here where, you know, it's starting to go close to 68 degrees up here. And we can get this garage down using stuff out here that produces heat. All of these inverters will produce heat to cool them off. So if I didn't run any air conditioning out here right now, I didn't run any for the entire day and it's two o'clock, this garage would probably be close to a hundred degrees with all the heat that's coming off of these. Now, because the garage is so cooled down, I'm putting my hand up here and it's probably only five degrees cooler than what the temperature is, even though we're bringing in 57 amps and 3.26 kilowatts right now, this thing really puts off a lot of heat for 12,000 watt inverter. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we have in the garage and we have these air conditioners out here is they produce a lot of heat and we can keep ourselves cool out here very easily. Just wanna give you a little idea of how many solar panels we have connected to these. And we do have four independent systems, 348 volt and 124 volt off grid. And uh, we don't use any grid power. None of this is connected to grid power. So in no way, shape, or form is this anywhere connected to the grid. Um, we used to plug in the things to charge the batteries. Um, if we wanted to run something overnight, we could charge our battery and run the same thing, uh, like a mini split overnight at the same time, and have our bar batteries completely charged when we wake up in the morning. And it'd be a lot cheaper to run that one mini split than a three and a half or a four ton, because those mini splits most of them are only one ton, which is 12,000 BTUs. And it's only at 120 volts. So running it overnight, we'd probably average about four to six amps when it's running. But then it'll, once it gets to temperature, it will probably drop down to two to three amps while it's keeping the room cool because when there's no sun out, it cools these rooms down very quickly and doesn't use very much electricity once they're cooled down. So much cheaper to run at nighttime than uh, central air. Anyways, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell for future videos, and we hope you have a truly wonderful and very blessed day. We'll see you soon.